I can't promise you riches. I can't promise you success. I can't promise you the heavens, the sky, or the sea. I can't promise you bitches. But I can promise you more Tsukihime. I dash into my classroom. It's still five minutes before class, so it's very noisy inside. Arihiko isn't here. Knowing him, he'll probably come in around second period. Lunchtime. It looks like Arihiko's not coming. Inui Arihiko and Yumizuka Satsuki are the two people absent today. Yumizuka Satsuki has caught a cold or something and will be absent for a while. Senpai doesn't seem to be coming too, so I guess I'll eat by myself. I say that, but I'm not hungry. Hey, Toms, what's up? What is it? I didn't feel so good to begin with, but after coming to school, I feel a lot worse. It's not just my body feeling heavy. The scar on my chest is irritating. It's an annoying sensation. Maybe I shouldn't have come to school. For a brief moment, I see the worrying faces of Hisui and Akia in my mind. Maybe the fact I ignored Akia's wishes for me to rest last night and instead went to see Arcade might have caused this. Being worn out just by sitting, I start to feel a strange uneasiness. Hold on. Class has started already. Which class was it? I can't remember today's fifth period lesson. Even though I look at the blackboard and stare at the marks left behind the uh, by the teacher's chalk, I still don't know what class this is. I know that feeling. I can't read it. The letters start to flow like water and mix together like some sort of hallucination. Ugh. I feel like I'm going to throw up. Dizziness. My mind starts to slide away. Click, click. Tremble, tremble. Creak, creak. Wobble, wobble. Those noises stick out. Incompatibility. Where is that inconsistency coming from? I can't settle this feeling of something being out of place throughout my body. It fills me to the brim. As if my bones are sliding out of place in their joints. Yes, since my joints are out of place, it causes the unnatural feeling. My corpse is burning, unseen smoke and crumbling away. Click, click. Tremble, tremble. Creak, creak. Wobble, wobble. I fall from my chair. A girl screams. I hear the footsteps of the teacher running to me. I... Even though I've completely passed out, I calmly watch myself from far away. What follows is like always. Collapsed from my anemia, I was carried to the clinic, where I slept until I recovered. Since I had a fever for over th of over 38 degrees Celsius, past 7 o'clock, the school's closing time... The school closes at 7? Okay. Or wait, no, because he, I guess, stayed past, like, when the kids get out. All right, sorry. <laughs> Since I had a fever of over 38 degrees Celsius past 7 o'clock, the school's closing time, the nurse called my house for someone to pick me up and went home. 38 degrees Celsius? Isn't that, like, really fucking hot? <laughs> like... And this resulted in... 
Are you okay, Shiki-san? You still have a fever, so please do not hesitate to lean on my shoulder. Yeah, that's how it is. No, I'm alright. I can at least walk, so please don't worry. I'm gonna put this here. There we go. Stepping away from Kohaku-san, I attempt to bluff my way out of it. Jeez. It's embarrassing enough for Kohaku-san to come pick me up. The day I lean on her shoulders, too, I'll die. Oh, that's not good, forcing yourself like that. It isn't your fault that your body's weak, Shiki-san. So you can ask for help a little. I won't tell Akihisama or Hisui-chan, so it's okay to depend on me for now. With a gentle smile, she takes my hand. Uh, yes. Sorry. Blushing furiously, I meekly do as she says. Certainly I might collapse if I continue to be stubborn. There's a car waiting outside, so please hold on until then. Pulling my hand, Kohaku-san starts to walk. Ugh. This isn't good. Just walking makes me incredibly dizzy. I depend on Kohaku-san to lead me to the stairwell as I hold on as I hold on to my consciousness. Why... Why am I going up to the second floor? Um, Kohaku-san... This... Isn't the right way. I call out to her. There's no response. No. Not only that. I don't feel her hand. Or even see her. Kohaku-san? I use all of my foggy consciousness to look around me. There's no one in the hallway. Only the moonlight streaming from the window is vivid. It comes suddenly. Ugh. The sound of my heartbeat, and a chill that races up my spine. Thump, tap, thump, tap, thump, tap, thump, tap, thump, tap, thump, tap. Thump, tap. Okay, you get the idea. <laughs> Jesus Christ. In the darkness, the footsteps draw closer. This is... This is similar to the fear I felt from that one time. Whoops. Kohaku-san! I call her name. Not to call for help, but to tell her to escape. I frantically call her name. Kohaku-san! 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 Where is she? I don't see her anywhere. The footsteps are near me now. At least, I want Kohaku-san to escape here unharmed. It's useless, Shiki. Who's talking? She's already done. I hear a voice. Oh, it's the guy. The ba- okay. It's useless, Shiki. She's already done. I hear a voice. In the darkness in front of me is the bandaged man who tried to kill me that night. Why is it? I feel like I know this person's face. You sure aren't lucky. If... If knew it was... Wait, what? If knew? Oh, I think it, it, if I knew. If I knew it was like this, I wouldn't have waited for you in front of the mansion. The footsteps draw closer. I try to move. But I only can. Uh, but I can only. To uh, but I can only totter along. I guess I pushed my body too hard. Uh, every day. It seems like my body, at the very last moment, broke down. This is the end, so I'll tell you. This is my layer now. I hear a stabbing sound. In his hands, a knife. The silver blade pierces directly into my heart. I collapse to the ground. I feel death working its way from my uh, from my very fingertips. 
my mind fades away, drop by drop. In that process, with my fading mind, I look up at the sky. I have nowhere else to look, so I just look there. The blue moon is in the night sky. How stupid. I'm about to die, but I... I'm charmed by such an ordinary thing. When is this memory from? In a forest like a black veal. On a terrible night. Just like this. I was staring only at the moon. End? Wait. Am I- was that a bad end? Wait. Am I dead? What? What did I do wrong? <laughs> Come on! What the fuck? <laughs> this is bullshit! <laughs> I was just trying to be a good boy. A responsible Japanese student. I just wanted to go to school on time. That's all I wanted to do. What the fuck? <laughs> okay. Will you take Seal Sensei's lesson? Is that supposed to be like, um... Is that kind of like helping Professor Kokonoe where, like, Seal just tells you what you were supposed to do? God damn it. <laughs> uh, okay. Um, I guess we might as well check it out, right? Yeah, it's exactly like... Okay. Hello. The hint corner in the for the poor lost Toto-kun who ended up at a dead end without knowing his left from his right. <laughs> God damn it. <laughs> uh, I see you've come to the fifth period. I think there are lots of Tonokuns who fail and fall into this end. Fuck you. <laughs> well, it's your divine punishment. Regret your own unluckiness for associating uh, with such a woman. Man, whatever. <laughs> okay. Normally there'd be no chance of salvation, but some of you came here in spite of rejecting that Sunny vampire. Sunny, even though she's a vampire, I'm picking a fight. So I'll throw out a lifeboat. There are about three reasons you came to this dead end, but to avoid it, you have to reassure your sister sometimes. You have to indulge in a stupid woman's selfishness sometimes to find a dirty vampire. Try, try going to a very dirty place. The fuck? That's about it. Hey, it's the cat! <laughs> Brunya! <laughs> question denied. Or so I'd like to say, but there seem to be many questions on this, so I will answer it. D is for dizzy, N is for not healthy, and M is for moon. It has the same initials as Dark Knight Moon, but it's a small play on words. Please remember to use proper Japanese. Wait, fuck. I saved after the decisions that I made. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, no. I'm going to have to go all the way back to part three. Uh, part it's a good thing I've been uh, keeping my saves. If I had saved over, I'd be so fucked. The stream would... Well, I guess I could just fast forward through. So it wouldn't be that bad, but still. Um, Jesus Christ. Yeah, so I can't use this save. So I gotta use this one. Depth <laughs> perception. Alright, so we can skip... 
progress to next choice. So, all this shit. <laughs> I should smooth things over with a chill for greeting. I don't think this choice matters, but I'll read it anyway. So, yeah, this was when I had just gotten back from the night when Arquage showed up to the house. Uh, so, Tono was like, what am I going to do? And last time I picked, um, I'll just apologize. But then she didn't like that. <laughs> so, this time I'm just going to do a normal reading. I say that. But her pressure is now on a completely different level than before. If I say anything wrong in the face of this frozen heat, she will give me a uh, she will give a devastating counter. I'll show a calm, reflective manner. Good morning, Akia. You're up early as usual. I say this quietly and as gently as possible. Yes. Thanks to what happened last night, I was unable to sleep at all. She says something so outrageous while still uh, smiling sweetly. This really isn't good. She can't be sane, being so angry, yet smiling like that. Uh, oh. Well, I hope you feel a little better, or something. I should stay away from danger. I have to say something and then escape from here. Um, then I'll be off to have some breakfast in the dining room. Yep. I should retreat to the dining room. Nissan. Her voice stops me dead in my tracks. Well, of course she wouldn't let me go like that. Yes. What is it, Akiya-san? By the way, adding San to her name means waving my white flag. She doesn't even bat an eyelash. I have something to discuss with you before breakfast. Okay, I think I saw this already. Yeah, everything else is the same. Okay. That's what I figured. So let's progress to the next choice. Alright, wow. We got pushed so far back. Jesus. Okay. God, so this is when Hisui said that she wouldn't snitch, and then we did all this. Um, this is before the day off. Because the, when we had the day off and followed Hisui into the forest is when things started to, to become a problem. What if I don't follow Hisui? I think, wasn't that a choice? Maybe it wasn't. I don't remember. <laughs> but if I don't follow Hisui, I don't get all that explanation about, um... Okay, it's not a choice. Never mind. So it's, that's, that's canon. Neener, 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 neener. Wow. Okay. So just going to see Arcrate is what got me killed. That's crazy, because that was a whole fucking, like, hour and a half scene. And it seemed, like, normal, right? Because it was, like, exposition on what's wrong with Shiki's body and, like, that it's not... Like, there was, like, reveals and stuff that it's not anemia. So it's, it's like... And I think the gag reel mentioned, like, a lot of people die here. That's very interesting. Do is I know that now. <laughs> okay. She looks at me in the eye with a serious expression. Do as Akiha says. But I feel so bad because, like, now Arcade's gonna have to wait. Oh well. <laughs> I guess it can't be helped. 
I'm afraid I'll make her cry if I keep going against her. All right. I'll go to sleep for today. Saying that, I lie down. Really? You're not going to sneak out of the room later? No, I get it. To tell the truth, my body feels incredibly heavy. I don't think I could sneak outside. Thank goodness. Akiha breathes out and relaxes visibly. Hisui, tell Kuhaku that Nissan is awake. Nissan, what about dinner? Oh, yeah. No, tell Kohaku-san I'm sorry, but I don't think I can eat right now. I'm just gonna go to sleep. I understand. Then Hisui, tell Kohaku that. Still looking downcast, Hisui nods and leaves the room. Now then, lying in bed, I start to feel sleepy again. Like this. I bet I could fall asleep in less than a minute. But before that... Akiha! There's a place like that in the garden. Yes. When we were children, we used to play there often. Oh. For some reason, I don't remember it well. Yeah. I really did forget all about it. And one more thing. It's a weird question, but... When we were kids... Wasn't there another kid with us? Huh? She tilts her head, like she doesn't understand what I'm saying. I guess not. There couldn't have been another kid. But, if that's true, how strange. That scene I saw in my dream. And the dream I saw in the clearing. If these two are the same, then it doesn't make sense unless there's another kid that was killed. No. It's nothing. Just talking about a dream. Is that so? Then, good night, Nissan. Please rest well. Yeah, I'll do that. As soon as I answer her, I fall asleep as fast as if I had passed out again. There we go! <laughs> Vermilion Crimson Moon 1. Okay. Tweet, tweet, tweet. Is the window open? I can hear the soft singing of birds from the garden. A cool breeze blows across my face. I feel the sunlight hitting my eyelids. A quiet, gentle atmosphere. A gentle morning. Morning. I guess I fell asleep last night as Akiha cared for me, and slept until now. Lying down, my body feels heavy. But I feel much better than I did yesterday. I decide to open my eyes and sit up. And... <laughs> ah, the little rascal finally woke up! I see Arquaid's face right in front of mine. <sighs> my brain goes blank and stops working due to this unexpected event. My mouth opens and closes, but my voice seems to be missing. Seriously, what's going on? Arquaid is in front of me. This is my room. It's past nine o'clock in the morning. Wait, this isn't going to be like a thing, is it? This is- we're not gonna have a problem, are we? <laughs> She's come inside still wearing her shoes. That's all I know for now. you Liar! We promised to meet again yesterday! She must be in a pretty bad mood if her eyes have lost their usual beauty. No. Not lost at all. Being this close, her beauty's more vivid than usual. Arquaid glares at me as I lay in bed. Wait! Arquaid! Why are you in my room this morning? I start to shout, but I stop myself. If I shouted now, Hisui would come here, and it would be all over. Everything is still chaotic, 
but my brain can grasp that much. Anyway, move! Just going into someone's room? Threatening a sleeping person? Don't you know how awful that is? What's with that attitude? I came here because you broke your promise. Sleeping while making someone wait. Just what in the world were you planning? She stares at me ill-temperedly. I calm down. That's right. I really did break my promise to meet Arquaid last night. Uh. I finally understand the situation. I understand why Arquaid is angry. I understand. But to do this... To come into someone's room still wearing shoes like that... What does she intend to do? Play soccer? <laughs> Seeing that the window is open, she probably came in through there. I see. Since I broke my promise, I'm at fault here. But sneaking in here is going a little far, you know. This isn't your house, Shiki. She gives a quick retort. You know, I really was angry before. I waited for many hours. As soon as I realized you weren't coming, I got so incredibly angry. I was thinking I would never let this happen again, and I'd rip your throat out. Jesus. She speaks, still looking ill-tempered. Do you get it, Cheeky? That feeling. I couldn't resist it. Even though I know I should calm down, the more I thought about it, the angrier I got. As if she still felt that way. Her red eyes seemed to blame me. Yeah, I guess you can't help yourself. Giving thanks to God my neck is still attached. I keep the conversation going. Isn't it? Isn't it? And I snuck in here, but since you were sleeping, I decided to wait. At least I wanted to hear your excuse. And since I didn't have anything to do, I watched your sleeping face. Yeah, your sleeping face is very quiet. It was almost scary. Sleeping like you were dead. I started feeling uneasy, because I thought that maybe you would never wake up. I sigh. If you were uneasy, then you should have woke me. I'm uneasy when you're next to me. But I thought it would be a waste. I don't know what I look like when I sleep, but I thought it would be a really... I don't know what I look like when I sleep. I don't know what I look like when I sleep, but I thought it would be... I, but, I, but I thought it would be real good if I slept like you did. I wondered why you looked so peaceful while I watched you sleep. While I was doing that, my anger disappeared, and then you woke up. Then you've been here this whole time? From last night until now? Yeah. People from this house came in a few times, but I hid myself, so it was okay. A girl also came to wake you up, but I didn't like her, so I sent her away. Arquaid laughs brightly. Wait, you sent her away? How? I wasn't rough. Didn't I tell you before that vampires have mystic eyes of enchantment? I merely used suggestion on her, saying that Shiki has already gone to school and didn't leave any memory of her meeting me. No memory? You... really are a troublesome person. Well, even if she is troublesome, at least she took care not to be detected. I bring my hands to my head as I sigh. All right. Sorry for yesterday, Arquaid. I don't know if this is making up for it, but I won't break any more promises. Yeah, I promise. I look her right in the eye as I declare this. Are you sure? I'm sure. Because now I realize your revenge is scary. Still lying down, I raise my hands and surrender. All of a sudden, her bad mood disappears completely. Arquaid gives a satisfied nod and says, All right. Arquaid, Arquaid finally gets away from the bed. Jeez. 
Sneaking onto someone's bed like that. Didn't you think about how hard the sheets would be to clean if you left a mess from your shoes? Complaining, I get up from the bed. Imagine being awake by someone who jumped up, jumped up the window for you, Lamau. Well, it's funny you say that. When I was in college, I was dating somebody and we were in my basement and we had like, it was like late at night and we went to go, we were watching something on TV and then I went to go, I think I went to the bathroom and when I came back, she was slumped over asleep on the couch and there wasn't any room left on the couch. So I couldn't, and like, I couldn't like wake her up and I didn't really want to cause like she was really tired. So I just went up to my room and went to sleep. And when I woke up the next day, like I woke up, was like, mm, and then I opened my eyes and she was like right there looking at me sleeping. It was the scariest fucking shit ever. It was fucking crazy. So that scene, it was, uh, it reminded me of that memory. Not a good relationship. <laughs> Arquate stands in the center of the room watching me as I slowly rouse myself from bed. Hey, what are you doing? What am I doing? I'm just waiting for you to change. You're not going out in those clothes, right? Well, yeah. No one walks around in pajamas. Wait, Arquate? Yeah, I was thinking we'd spend the day together, Shiki. You said you'd make it up... You... You said you'd make it up for breaking your promise, didn't you? Arquade says this casually, as if it was the most natural thing in the world. Today? All day? What are you saying? I have school. Hey, you even said you were sure. Are you choosing school over me, Shiki? Uh... She's got me there. I can't be helped, I'll go with all credit. It can't be helped, I should go to school. It can be helped, I should go to school. <laughs> um... I'm gonna go with Arcade. That sounds like more fun. I glance at the clock. It's already past nine. I'd be late even if I went to school now. And to be honest, going with Arquade is more fun than going to school. All right, I'll spend the day with you. But if we're going into the city during the day, I don't think there'll be any dead around. I don't care about that. I just wanted to walk around. So even if it is daytime, it doesn't matter. We aren't making up for last night and going to look for vampires? Yes, of course we'll look tonight. But you have to help me all day and night. Uh, but... Sorry, excuse me. But to have you... But to have you help me all day and night would be hard. So during the day, I thought we could relax. I think that'd be more fun too. But... Just the two of us walking around, that's... Like what they call a date in the real world. Maybe you can't say that with a vampire like Arquade, but I suppose she's telling me to take her out for some fun. For me, I... I need to get ready mentally, and... What's wrong, Shiki? Your face, it's turning red. Uh... I cover my face with my hands and look away. Certainly it's just been the two of us many times before, but those were emergency situations and it was more like a pact of cooperation than anything between a man and a woman. That's why, no matter how pretty I thought she was, I tried not to notice it. But if, without any danger, without any purpose, if the two of us just walk around, I might notice something I never noticed before, and it makes me hesitate. 
Cheeky? Hey, are you going to school after all? No way. I said I'll do it, so I will. I don't know what you're thinking, but walking around shouldn't be a problem. Then it's decided. Then let's go! She walks toward the window she snuck in earlier. Wait, wait a minute. I'm going to change, so can you just look outside for a while? What, did you call me? Oh, yes, no. Just go outside. I'll be there soon. Okay, I'll wait outside. I've waited this long, so don't make me wait any longer, Shiki. She jumps out the window with the likeness of a cat. I hear the rustling of the trees outside. She didn't jump to the ground, but along the tree branches. With a body like that, it should have been easy getting here undetected. This isn't the time to be impressed. I too have to sneak out without Hisui noticing. I change into some normal clothes. Cracking open the door slightly, I look around to make sure no one's in the hallway and tiptoe outside. Luckily, no one saw me as I made my way out. Arquaid is looking the other way as she mumbles to herself. Thanks for waiting. Come on, let's go, Arquaid. If we stick around here, Gohaku-san will find us. Huh? Uh, yeah, we should go. Completely different from before, her words seem very empty. What is it? This isn't like you at all. Did something happen just now? Uh, no, nothing really. I said the again part very strong, but her words are still hollow. Seems like she's planning something. I feel kind of scared. Are you feeling sick because it's daytime? There's no need to force yourself to go out. If it's hard for you, we can stop. <laughs> I feel fine right now. But seeing this wall reminded me of last night. About last night? You mean while we... Uh, excuse me. You mean while you waited for me at the park? Yes, Arquaid nods meekly. I dashed here with all my strength and snuck in your room. But it seems strange when I think about it now. Why was I so angry back then? It's just a little promise. Saying she doesn't get it, Arquaid crosses her arms in thought. Ah, that's right. Maybe you get it, Cheeky. You always tell me I'm so stupid, so maybe you can understand. Hey! If she doesn't understand herself, then how does she expect me to? There's no way I understand. But if I have to respond, well, it's because you're selfish, because you hate me, it's because you're a vampire. Hmm. To call her selfish. Selfishness is a spectrum, right? It's healthy to have some selfishness, right? It's to have some sense of self-preservation, to have some sense of ego. So calling somebody selfish could theoretically be spun as like, not a compliment, but just like an observation of a necessary personality trait. Yeah, they're all kind of insults, right? Like, it's because you hate me is kind of, like, manipulative, right? Like, you hate me, don't... That's, like, some borderline shit. I don't want to fucking say that. It's because you're a vampire. That's just, like... That's racist. <laughs> that's just fucking racist. So it's, like, cute insult versus, like, uh, abusive insult versus racist insult. Um... I guess I'll go with selfish, but she could take that the wrong way. Although it could be because you're a vampire, because a promise means less when you live so long. That could be that could be a thing. 
Can I not save right before a choice? Are you fucking serious? I hate this game. <laughs> oh my god. Okay. Uh. You know what? Just for that, I'm gonna choose racism. How the heck am I supposed to know? You're a vampire, so I bet you think a lot differently than we do. Hey! What do you mean? My thought process are my thought processes are basically the same as a human's, so there's only a little difference. But still different, right? Well, leaving that aside, it's impossible to understand another's feelings. I'm not too sure about my own emotions, so it's impossible for me to understand a vampire's train of thought. Yeah. I don't understand you either, so there's no need to understand. Yeah, yeah, I'm just an idiot for asking you. Arquaid turns away with a hmph. She's gotten a little angry, but at least she seems convinced. Does that clear it up? Then let's go. Arquaid, do you have anywhere in mind? Hmm. I don't know, so I'll let you decide. Just take me wherever? So she told me we were going somewhere, and that's how this is? Oh well. I'm not sure what kind of place she likes, but I'll take her to a good hangout place. Well then, go for the usual, take her to a movie theater, she'll probably like somewhere such as a back alley. Calm the fuck down, Jesus Christ. Arquaid looks nice compared to her remake design. Um, I like both. I, th I think both are good. I don't really know, so let's go to the park. I mean, we've been to the back alley. We've been to the park. We haven't been to a movie theater. Um, yeah, let's go to the movie theater. For the time being, the movie theater is always a safe bet. As long as the movie you choose is good, it can't be boring. This place is always pretty lively, although I don't know what's here. Uh, is that me talking or her? Arquaid walks right next to me. I said me, I meant Shiki. <laughs> On the way. Actually, even now. Everyone around us keeps casting glances our way. It doesn't need to be said, but it's probably because Arquaid really stands out. I'm aware of it a little, but everyone else's reactions seem to make me more conscious of it. And it's a bit troubling. Arquaid acts, like, uh, Arquaid acts just like she normally does, but since I can't help but be overwhelmed by her femininity, I can't seem to make any meaningful conversation. Hey, do you hear me, Shiki? I'm asking you where we're going. Uh, um, well, most couples here usually go to the movie theater. I point to the movie theater in front of us. Movie theater? Hmm. So, watching a movie then? The princess does not seem to be pleased. But after coming this far, I don't have a choice. I mean, what? <laughs> None of these choices were good. It's not like I have any clue what would please a vampire girl in the first place. Because I've gone this far, I just have to prepare myself for her to say boring. Just go in. If you're dissatisfied, we can always split up here. I'm not... <clears throat> I'm not really dissatisfied. Giving a sigh, Arquaid follows me. She slumps her shoulders as if to say, you good-for-nothing guy. Oh, I'm going to buy tickets, uh, but what do you want to see? Let's see. There's a romance and a romance and a romance. This theater kind of stinks. To be honest, I want to go back too. Any one of them is fine. They really all look the same. Yeah, then let's just buy one. I get in the shortest line and buy two tickets. Here you go. Just show this ticket when we get in. 
They'll take half of the ticket, but that's how it's supposed to be, so don't get angry. I know that much. You really think I don't know anything, Shiki? Uh, no, that's not it. I just thought maybe you didn't know much about human society. I have some knowledge of it stored away. I know at least about a movie theater. Giving a small hmm, she turns her face away and walks towards the theater. It was a mistake. I knew talking to a vampire, uh, excuse me, I knew taking a vampire to a movie theater would be too dull. We exit the theater. We watched a romance. It wasn't exactly boring, but not terribly interesting either. It was a typical French movie. It focused less on breathtaking scenes and concentrated more on creating a calm atmosphere. As we leave the theater, Arquade walks with me wordlessly. Damn, an uncomfortable silence. Maybe she, sh uh, maybe she would have been happier if it was an action flick or a horror movie. Hey, Arquade. Yeah, it was really fun, Cheeky. What? Uh, fun, Arquade? Man, hearing about it and seeing it were two entirely different things. Even though I knew some background information about what a movie theater was, my imagination fell short of reality. Arquade gives a happy, heartfelt smile. The darkness was really nice, and even though the sounds were loud, they weren't noisy. And having you next to me was also fun. But more than that, the subject matter was really good. I was surprised they would go so far to make up a story. It's so detailed, my imagination was nothing like that. I was really moved. Oh, uh, is that so? Huh? You look like you don't agree. Was it boring? No, not really boring, just ordinary. There's way more interesting things than that. No way! That was really good, you know? Well, I guess movie experts like that... I'm sorry, I guess movie experts kind of, uh this sentence. <laughs> well, I guess movie experts like that kind of movie, but there's a ton of better ones. They're not out right now, but there are epics out, uh, there are epics out there many times better than that. To be blunt, what we just saw was pretty low quality. I'm surprised. It's too easy to read your expressions, Arquade. Not just surprised, but amazed. At Arquade. She looked so not into it. I thought she was going to complain, but now she's like an excited kid. Too bad. If it was earlier, we could have seen a better movie. If I knew you would have liked it, I would have taken you. It's not so she thanks me, but I genuinely did want to make her happy. Oh, I see. I guess we don't have much luck. Arquade slumps her shoulders in disappointment. Yeah, we just keep missing the opportunities. I slump my shoulders in disappointment too. Yeah, really. It really would have been nice to see her happy, smiling face a little longer. Well, you ruined it! <laughs> she was perfectly happy! What the fuck? It's now past two, so to ease my hunger, I take us to a fast food restaurant. Jesus Christ. <laughs> Come on, bro. You can do a little better than that. You live in a mansion. <laughs> like... I don't even know if she eats this kind of food, but after Arquate stares long and hard at the menu, she ends up ordering the same thing I did. I sit down across from her. After Arquade looks around quickly, she pops a french fry in her mouth like she's done it before many times. Wow, you seem pretty used to it. I thought maybe it was your first time. Yeah, this is the first time I've done it. I've known about places like these, but it was only from information sources. Just information. 
I see. You watch the news, so I guess you read magazines too. Hmm, not quite like that. I need knowledge to fit in with the times, right? So when I wake up, I study. Uh, I, so when I wake up, I study the information of the time, and then go into action. Well, it's usually. Oh, I can know it's still her talking. Well, it's usually over in a few days, so it usually ends up being useless. She says things that are hard to understand like this from time to time. Hmm. Why does it end up useless? Because I go to sleep right away. I don't know how many years later I wake up next time. So I can't use much of what I remember. After it's over, all I do is sleep. Hmm, but maybe I've been missing out. I only knew the world through those resources. I knew about people... I knew... I knew about how people would gather like this, but I never experienced it. I see. But isn't knowing just enough? Just now, you ordered some food like it was perfectly natural. Of course. I studied so I can act that way. But that's all. Experience is far greater than theory. Even if I know about zillions of things, it's useless if I've never done them. Arquaid sighs. Is that so? I think some people say theory makes up for a lack of experience. That's something those who only know theories say. I used to think that way until just recently. Arquaid's expression starts to cloud. For some unknown reason, I don't like seeing her face like that. Is that so? I think there's just those for whom theory can make up for lack of exp I think there's just those for whom theory can make up for lack of experience, and those from whom experience trumps theory. There's a lot of people out there in the world, so not everyone's the same. Wow, you got really deep and serious, Shiki. Hey now, arquaid san You're the one who started being all serious. I was just going along. Don't kill the conversation like that. Uh... Um... Since you're telling me all that stuff about yourself. Yeah, I know. You always listen to me when I want to talk. You always yell at me, but you listen to me when it's, se when it's serious. Aqua laughs brightly. Hmm. <laughs> That's what she thinks, anyway. But I think such a genuine smile suits her best. I was thinking about what you said earlier. I really am narrow-minded. I can't really see the. Uh, excuse me. I can't really see anything else after I make up my mind. Not needing anyone but myself. I'm the only one who's right. I can only think in those terms. That's right. There are a lot of hearts out there, so there's a lot of people who uh, that can do easily what I can't. She somehow seems very gentle as she contemplates. <laughs> but even if I contemplate it, my personality won't change. I like this me the best. And I believe it's the correct way. She smiles as she says she smiles as she says those courageous words. She then looks around like before and takes a bite of her hamburger. Chomp. Chomp. As if to erase any image of her being a vampire, Arquaid chows down on her junk food. How come? It seems impossible to look elegant while eating a hamburger. But Arquaid makes it look beautiful. All right, Shiki's she, down bad. <laughs> what? Staring at me like that? Is this not how you eat it? Arquaid hurriedly puts down her hamburger back on her tray. She then wipes her mouth with a paper napkin. But even that simple action seems so elegant. No, it's all right. It's right, but it's strange. In your case, it doesn't suit you. So don't do it? Wait, what? 
I don't even know why I say this as I chomp on my hamburger like a hamburger should be eaten. What do you mean it doesn't suit me? It's an image problem. That small mouth of yours isn't fit to eat fast food. Then why did... Fries aren't a problem, so you can have my sh... Oh my god. <laughs> I hope he's joking. Fries aren't a problem, so you can have my share. I put my French di I put my French fries down on her tray. I really don't know what I'm doing at all. I don't want them. Okay. I don't want them. I don't feel just like eating those. Or I don't feel like just eating those. After saying that, she brings the hamburger to her mouth once more. She might be worried about my stare, as she eats it more normally. Well, I can live with that. But a hamburger-eating vampire? All living things need nutrition to live, so they eat. Before, Ar before Arquay declared that she doesn't drink blood. So, in order to gain that nutrition, does she eat food like us normal humans? Hey, Arquay. What, you meanie? No, I wasn't going to criticize you. I just had a question, if that's okay. Sure, what is it? Um, you're a vampire, right? Then I was wondering, maybe if food for you was only blood? Her eyes widen. I knew it. It was a rude question. See, even Arquaid's facial expression is getting angry. Or not. Hey, Shiki, normally I don't eat food. Certainly, eating like this allows me to move on my own, but it's more of a mental thing. For me to eat, in other words, taking in nutrition, it's a different process than, one, than the one you have. I do have an appetite, but maybe it's more akin to lust. If I don't eat, I get irritated, but since I don't put much priority on it, inversion impulses rarely happen. She easily denies the blood as food theory. Yeah, that's what it is. She really seems to be okay with not drinking blood. I see. That's good. Arquaid isn't someone that kills humans to feed. It really is a good thing. Jeez. If Arquaid just said from the beginning of a vampire that doesn't suck human blood, then I would have agreed to help her from... From the start. Hey, wait a minute. You don't call that a vampire. You do. Even... Even... Excuse me. You do. Even you can't resist eating for one day, right? For those vampires who are true ancestors like me, the highest class of food, the thing that can satisfy our desires, the, the thing that can satisfy our desires the most is blood. So in order to live and fulfill our desires, we can substitute blood with other things. But when it comes to dead apostle vampires, or excuse me, but when it comes to the dead apostles, vampires that were originally human, it's a different matter. In order to maintain their existence, they need the blood of others. Um, in other words, the best way to satisfy your hunger is blood? But you said you hated drinking blood. So, just like people who don't like certain food, do you hate the taste of blood? I take a guess at a satisfactory simplification for the long explanation she gave. However, it seems like I was a little off. I don't know. I don't know what blood tastes like. Huh? I told you I'm not a full vampire. Not knowing the taste of blood. I still don't know that. All I know is to drink human blood is to refuse to recognize them as people. She looks away, not even trying to look at me. Hey, Shiki. What if... What if birds or fish had the same amount of intelligence and lifespan as you did? Could you eat them? Could you justify it to yourself 
by saying no matter how much intelligence they have, there's still food? And then eat them? No, that's... Could I eat them? I don't know. I don't know, but first off, I'd try and eat other food. Things that didn't have intelligence. See? Just like that. That's why I hate the thought of drinking blood. Well, maybe there are likes and dislikes, as you said, too. If I could, I'd like to avoid the sight of blood. But, yes, but if... If humans didn't have the same worth, intelligence, or values than I did, then maybe I would drink blood. Isn't providence of nature taking the lives of other things to protect your own? Right? Arquaid asks me for agreement. But that, even if Arquaid says it, I can only deny it. I don't want to agree to that. Certainly that may be true, but in the first place, humans are like you. So, let's just cut short this kind of conversation. I don't like talking about what-ifs. Really? I like what-ifs. Not knowing how things will turn out, yet still having hope for at least for that moment. If. What if. Then, what if she drank blood like other vampires? Would, be, would we be even talking like this? What's wrong, Shiki? Your face got dark all of a sudden. Uh, do you have to go to the bathroom? Hey! You come up with that when someone's taking... Um, you come up with that when someone's thinking seriously? I sigh. Even though I'm seriously thinking about it, Arquay doesn't seem to think much about drinking blood. Yeah, it doesn't concern me. I'm sorry, uh, that was Shiki talking. Uh, jeez, just m uh, mumbling to yourself like that. Trying to hide something isn't manly, Shiki. Arquaid looks as, uh, look like, uh, Arquaid looks like an angry cat again. I'm not really hiding anything. Besides, you're the one with all the secrets. You're just having... You're just having fun saying things I can't understand. Having fun? I'm not trying to do that. I don't know where her bad mood went, but she suddenly calms down. She looks like she's uneasy with me nailing it on the head. Really? You were having fun seeing me slump like earlier. Do you like teasing, or is it the secrecy? Sorry. Well, we are two different kinds of life forms, so I don't care. Th that's not it. I was just trying to answer you. It probably looks like I'm hiding a lot of things because you never ask. Hmm. So whatever I ask, you'll tell me? Yes. We're a team after all. All right. Then as she wishes, I shall ask questions to clear things up. I'll tell her about last night. Details about her enemy. Hobbies, history, and uh, her three sizes. So. Hmm. Technically, if I tell her about last night, it's going to be the probably a lot of the same information we got from the bad ending. Um, and I think ditto, uh, details about Arquaid's enemy. Although, there might be more, like, why do you hunt, why do you specifically hunt dead apostles? And then, question her about her hobbies, history, and her, and her three sizes. That just seems, like, come on. <laughs> you know? She just fucking kills you, bad end. <laughs> um... I want to know her three sizes. Well, you know what? That's why you're single. 
<laughs> I'm sorry. That was mean. <laughs> I'm gonna I'm gonna just do this. I forgot because she started telling me to take out uh to take her out to play, but there was something I wanted to ask her about. Then I'll ask. Arquade, I was attacked two nights ago by a strange person. Huh? A strange person? What kind? Well, that is... I calm down and I, des and I describe as clearly... Hold on. Let's resituate myself. <clears throat> I calm down and I describe as clearly as I can what happened uh, two nights ago. Yeah, that's how it was. Finishing my explanation, I read Arquade's expression. From when I started until now, her eyes remained sharp without any gentleness. So, what is it, Arquade? That bandaged man, and that person wearing those robes like some priest, are they enemies of yours? Yes. Both of them are enemies. I don't know just who or what that bandaged man is, but that woman wearing the Catholic robes, I have an idea about- Wait! This is the exact same dialogue, so they just copy-pasted it from the bad ending. Or maybe it was copy-pasted to the bad ending from here. I guess I'll read it again. She narrows her eyes as if she was in a bad mood. No, she looks less like she was in a bad mood and more like she's irritated. You know, in a bad mood. I may know the person who helped you, Shiki. Man. If it's really her, she'll probably be able to find the enemy uh, she'll probably be able to find the enemy before me. She bites her lip vexedly. Wait a minute. I didn't say that person was a woman, though. No, there's no mistake. That woman is the only agent given authority to hunt heretics alone, and who uses black keys that combine cremation rite and steel shell effect. Her irritability almost seems like hostility. Even when she spoke about Nervinsker, her voice never was saturated with emotion to this extent. Arquade. Um, that person who helped me. Is she a vampire? No, that's not it. That's right. Oh, sorry. That's right. I've yet to tell you about something else that's very important. I think I explained it before, but vampires... Uh, like the one making his lair in this town turn humans into their minions and expand their territory. At the same time, they try their utmost to, con to conceal their existence. Even though victims appear, they use various magical techniques to make things appear not out of the ordinary. Do you know why? Well, it's because humans aren't stupid. If they find out monsters like this exist where they live, they'd attack them. Even though humans are weak, they have things like police, so they might be able to do something. Well, I guess that's true. Uh, wait, no, that's a paragraph break, so is that Shiki talking? Well, I guess that's true. But police are only a law enforcement against humans. We don't consider them at all. Er, wait. Is that... Who's fucking speaking right now? I'm so confused. But it's correct to say that vampires hide their presence for the sake of self-preservation. So that must be Arquade. But it's correct to say that vampires hide their presence for the sake of self-preservation. Shiki, there is a natural enemy of the vampires. A group of something like professional killers that now have the power balance in their favor. It's true for other transcendent species, but especially for vampires. It's fatal for them to reveal themselves. Even if a vampire made a secret kingdom in a village somewhere in the mountains, away from all civilization, this natural enemy would definitely notice if victims kept increasing. Vampires exploit the humans in secret, for no reason other than self-preservation. Uh, is this a quote still? Yes, it is. The vampires hide their dead victims' bodies, not out of fear of human society finding out, but in fear of these natural enemies discovering them. Huh? The natural enemy of vampires? Yet another group of monsters I don't know about? For a normal guy like me, I just want all these unnatural things to stop appearing. What are you saying? 
Their natural enemy is without a doubt you humans. Natural enemies? Us? Yeah. Starting from a long time ago, humans used many kinds of magic, the occult, magical ceremonies, to create an organization and started to eliminate primates other than humans. The greatest of these uh, is Christianity, the pride of the Vatican, the exorcists. The Catholic Church always viewed non-humans as impurities, but vampires are considered the most dangerous. There are many religious groups in the world, but the Catholic Church looks at vampires with more hostility than the rest. You know, it's almost an, an obsession. They're so insane, I don't even want to mess with them. Arquaid lets out a sigh. The one who helped you was a member of an elite organization that hunts heretics. This group, the Burial Agency, is part of the church. They use their own strength rather than law to deal with contradictions to Christianity. These hidden exorcists are more like professional killers. Priests that go around exterminating vampires, huh? It's so fitting. I'm not really sure what to say. Then they aren't like us. If this burial agency is a group whose purpose is to hunt vampires too, can't we search together? That won't work. For them, it's enough that someone is a vampire. To them, non-human primates are just evil. It doesn't matter if they suck blood or not. The exorcist may have, uh, may have even come here just to seal me rather than to fight the vampire who lives in the city. Things have gotten quite complicated. Arquay's enemy is sought after by both the vampire and a group that hunts vampires. What, what is this? Then you're all by yourself? Yes, that is the life of a vampire. Didn't, didn't Nervinsker say so himself? Even though vampires belong in the same species, their nature is so different that in the end, they're all alone. Arquay takes another bite of her hamburger. She speaks of being all alone so casually. Not feeling satisfied, I continue to listen with a sour expression. After eating, we do some window shopping on the main street and end up heading towards my school for some reason. The sun starts to set. Actually, it's because Arquade suddenly exclaims, Let's go to the school you're attending. And I couldn't tell her no. I've told you this before, but we can't go inside. I've skipped school today, after all, and you're an outsider. I know. I won't cause you any trouble, so just relax. Arquade peers at the school from the gate. Wait a minute. If Shiki skipped school, I have to imagine the school would call the mansion to be like, yo, where's Shiki? Is he sick again? And Aki would be like, oh, Shiki's sick again. He probably didn't get up. Hisui, go check on her. And then Hisui, go check. And he's fucking gone. So they have to know that he's not at the house. Wow, brilliant observation, Mike. Jesus Christ. Sorry. <laughs> um... Arquade peers at the school from the gate. Huh? Arquade tilts her head. What's wrong? Did something happen? I look at the school grounds from behind her. Uh, huh? This time, I'm the one tilting my head. There's no sign of anyone at the school grounds. It's not even quite six o'clock yet. At this time, there should be a lot of athletic clubs still practicing. Shiki, it seems there's no one here. I'm not sure why, but there really is no one here. I don't see anyone in the buildings either. Shiki, there's no one inside, you know. Arquaid sta uh, stares upward at me. Somehow, I'm pretty sure I know what she's trying to say. No way. I refuse her bluntly, but she doesn't listen to me. If there's no one there, then I can't get in trouble for going in. We came at a great time, didn't we? I told you I don't want to. Wow, it's bigger than I thought inside. 
The school building is also really huge. It seems well suited for this task, for its task. That's strange. Arquid's voice isn't coming from right near me, but from inside the school grounds. Shiki, this door won't open, so is it okay if I break it down? What blurring speed. Arquid is already right next to a glass door with her arm cocked to break it. Y y why won't you listen to what people are saying? With all my strength, I dash toward the glass to prevent it from being broken by a big idiot. Ah, you came over. She gives a smile as if she was enjoying this. Is going to my high school this much fun? There's a lot of other better places I can take you, so let's just get out of here. I don't think so. The place you've always come to, it's pretty fun. Arquid gives a mischievous laugh and smiles devilishly. Shiki, I want to go inside here. Can you kill the lock on this? C kill it? You... Wouldn't it be less messy if... Uh, wouldn't it be less messy than if I did it? The way you slice something apart doesn't have any cross sections that looks like an action of a blade. If someone finds it later on, it'll just look like it fell apart on its own. Come on, come on! She points to the glass window by the hallway. Sheesh, you're acting like a kid. I half lower my glasses. Now then, a window with a line of, uh... A window with a line at the crescent lock would be... Crap. There conveniently is one. Taking my knife out of my pocket, I cut down the lock. No, not cut down. More like killing it. All set. Uh, let's go in here. Lifting, the, uh, lifting open the glass window, we enter the school building. I knew it. Arquaid declares that she wants me to be her guide to my classroom first. Hey, Shiki. What do you study here? What? Uh, normal school stuff. History. A lot of deep studies into culture of my country. And to know about, uh, and to know about how things work, we study physics and math. And we might go overseas one day, so we study English, too. Oh, really? Taking you into account, I thought you were studying things like the best way to slice people up and how to use various blades. She says something pretty funny. Arquade, you're saying like uh, you're saying that even though you already know what kind of place this is, right? <laughs> Good job. She starts to clap. It's always hard to understand what she's thinking, but today takes the cake dragging me here. Just what the heck is she planning? Shiki. What is it? Suddenly looking serious like that. You really did have a reason for bringing me here, didn't you? No. There wasn't any reason. I just wanted to hear about this kind of place. This kind of place? About school? Yeah. You spent about half your day here, right? Is there a use for all the knowledge and experiences you gain here? Or are you just wasting your time learning all these unnecessary things for you? Huh? Her question is the least understandable so far. For example, there are some skills you learn here that will never be used. Isn't that a waste? Well, maybe it is a waste. I learned math, but... We only use the simplest of math in our daily lives. I learned about these con I, uh, excuse me. I learned about this country's history in English, but I don't know if I'll ever use it. Oh, so you realize it then. But then why do you do such pointless things? Your time is so short, so you don't have time to waste. No time to waste? Well, we don't have a specific goal. So we live pointless like this until we do. I can't believe it. Even though you know it's pointless, you make it something to live for. Yeah, I really can't believe it. 
Her voice is terribly hushed. I don't know why, of course. Something to live for, huh? That may be true. But are useless things so bad? Uh, isn't it alright to do extra things? Even if I use what I learn only here, it still becomes a reminder of my days here. Some years later, there will be a time when I just think. And I'll remember back and say, yeah, that's how it was back then. And give a bitter smile. So there's meaning in it. I don't get it. Those memories themselves are pointless. But you're saying there's fun in remembering them, Shiki? Yeah, that's okay. People are designed to not remember painful things. But in the first place, the lives of humans are full of pointless things. To think of it, isn't life itself pointless? So, I don't think about it too deeply. I think it's best just to fool yourself and live like you don't realize there's no meaning to life. You know it's pointless, yet you do it. I really don't get it. I can't do anything pointless. Even now, I haven't done anything that I didn't need to do. What are you saying? Wasn't this whole day full of pointlessness? Isn't your purpose hunting vampires? Then there's really no need for you to go walking around with me. That's true. I don't understand that either. I wanted to ask you because you don't seem to do anything but pointless things. But now I'm totally confused. Hey. Yes, yes. I'm sorry. I'm only a completely pointless person. Uh, yeah. I'm sorry. I understand what you're trying to say, Shiki. Humans are a collective, so their worth isn't determined by the individual, but by a whole group. Even if an individual is mistaken, if the group is correct, then it's forgiven. <laughs> Not on Twitter! <laughs> But as for us, we are solitary creatures, so we can't allow ourselves to be mistaken. We can't allow our wills to be influenced by anyone else. So, that's why I was always taught to never do extra things. Quietly. She talks as if she was in a confessional. But now, I don't know anymore. For just a brief time, really only seven days I started to wonder if I was really right because it was so fun doing this living like this I never thought until now how happy it could make me Arquid maybe I broke down I've never been awake for this long until now maybe I'm already fast asleep dreaming about all this with empty eyes, Arquaid whispers these words. Ugh. I can't speak. Her image flutters like a projected hologram. Broken? What do you mean? You look pretty normal to me. Maybe on the outside. But I'm different on the inside. Happiness and pain. All of these extra feelings are becoming greater. I can't ignore things that I used to be able to in the past. So, I'm broken, right? And also, I'm not normal. I'm different from you, Shiki. I'm a vampire. Saying that, she seems to laugh. Really faintly, as if hiding the red of the setting sun. That... That's strange. It's just... Weird. The dusk classroom. Bathed in the red sun. A vulnerable looking girl. This scene, it's... That's... Not like you at all. Yeah, it's not like her at all. You're a vampire. 
so don't look so vulnerable, like you were some ordinary girl. Things you can't ignore? Having to do pointless things? If it's not causing trouble to anyone, then isn't it all right to just let it all go? I said that, I, I said not to think about yourself, to, I'm sorry, it's still him talking. I said not to think about yourself too seriously. I don't know what you're thinking about, but I don't see a problem. You're not causing trouble to anyone. Really? But you always yell at me. Is that different? <laughs> I'm an exception. I have the sin of killing you, so dealing with you is just karma. It's okay. I'm doing it because I want to. So please, don't think about the trouble you're causing me. Arquaid's expression clouds over. If she makes that kind of face, it's a little troubling. She looks so weak. I want to embrace her. Please, Arquaid, get it straight now. It's true that you're selfish. You don't listen to other people, and you're full of problems. But other than that, you're pretty normal. You're not broken. You're just like a normal girl. So, smile. If you keep making that expression, it'll make me feel bad. That's pretty mean. Am I really that selfish? Awkward looks at me suddenly, as if studying my expression. I'm taken aback a little. It seems this princess didn't realize she was selfish. Uh, is that Shiki laughing? <laughs> what are you saying? If you take every bit of selfishness out of you, there'd be nothing left but bones. Just bones. What I'm saying doesn't quite make sense, but it seemed funny. Because even in my wildest dreams, I never imagined I would see Arquaid embarrassed over herself. <sighs> oh, she got mad. Shiki, you jerk! I was seriously discussing matters, and you act so heartlessly. Like I said, didn't I say it was nice to everyone but you? So being mean to you isn't anything new. Stifling my laughter, I look back at her. The cloud hanging over her head has dispersed, and she has a genuine expression on her face, which is more like which is much more like her. But you know, I guess it's better for you to be lively. I'm a little relieved. Uh, why are you relieved? Aren't you supposed to be heartless towards me? Uh, yeah, that's right. I tilt my head questioningly. That's strange. I don't even know why myself. Before, I just didn't want to see her looking depressed and I wanted to protect her. That's ridiculous. Without a doubt, she is pretty, and I know she's a good person. Also, it isn't boring to be with her. But no way can such a ridiculous thing be happening. Get a hold of yourself, Shiki. She's a vampire. That's pretty vague. Are you saying you don't understand yourself? Be quiet. It's all right if I don't understand myself. I've always been aware of how strange I am from the beginning. That's why my memories are always vague. Oh, I see. That's why you're always spaced out, Shiki. Arquaid nods to herself, as if deeply understanding the matter. Having her take my excuse so seriously makes me wonder if it really is true. Well then, we can't stay in this classroom forever. We should hurry up and leave before we're found by teachers left in school. Come on, let's head out. There's nothing else left here, right? Yeah, nothing else, but Shiki? I throw her a questioning glance. She seems to be pondering her words, and then asks me a strange question. Shiki, do you 
enjoy things? Are you sick today or something? Don't make fun of me. I know a little bit about your uh I know a little bit about your body. Even you know it, right? That it isn't strange for you to die at any moment. What? Thump. The scar on my chest almost feels like it's squirming. You... Well, humans die eventually. But in your case, death will come quicker than for other people. Her eyes are serious. But everyone has lines of death on them. So there are many places where they can die easily. It's not like I'm the only one who's very close to death. Answer me. Do you ever have moments where you enjoy yourself even though you have such an unstable hold on life? <sighs> you really are stupid. There's no way I can know that. But there's one thing clear to me. I almost died eight years ago, and for a short while, probably when I was getting surgery at the hospital, I felt like it was in a dark place. Maybe it was a dream. Just at the time, I truly felt like I died, like that place was truly death. I was extremely happy after my miraculous recovery. Then I met Sensei and was able to return to normal life. I never realized it until I died once. But the world is so peaceful and such a fun place to be. They say pleasure can't be found in this life, but I think for humans, just living is good enough. That's why I can continue living like this, even knowing it's all pointless. That's why, if someone asks me if I'm enjoying life, unless it's something really unforgivable, I can't help but answer that I am. No matter how much despair it is, I'm satisfied with just existing. That's something more certain than the nothingness of death. No one had to teach me that, but I still know that. Just being allowed to be here really is a wonderful thing. It's just... Isn't living enjoyable enough? Everything up until now was fun. So I can feel like living. Well, I guess this is just how I can answer your question. I can't really say anything too profound. I've only been alive for 17 years. I see. So that's how your heart is. Just doing that is fun enough? That's true. Even though you know it's something extra, you can't give it up because you enjoy it. I was scared of that and asked, but perhaps that might be a good answer. What, are you still thinking about that thing from before? Yes, but for how the hard feelings have faded. I can't stray off course until this vampire is defeated. Until then, we will fight together. Right? She says, smiling. Until this vampire's defeated, huh? That's right. That was the, that was the relationship between us. Because today was just so normal. I completely forgot about the most important fundamental fact. Hey, Arquaid. Just without thinking. When this is all over, when we're done defeating this vampire, before we part, can't we do something like this just once more? Those words really come out of my mouth naturally. Uh, what do you mean? I'm saying after your task is finished, let's just do these pointless things one more time. In the end, we're here together because we agreed to help each other. So, I really was wondering, what would happen if we were to meet again without any responsibilities, if we just met for no particular reason? That's not true. Just as friends, and not thinking about her being a vampire at all. 
I just thought it would make Arquaid happy if we created some normal memories like that. If you're too busy, then it's okay. I only thought of it just now, anyway. But it's really the opposite of how I feel. After her eyes widened in surprise, she nods. Okay. When everything's over, let's come here again, Shiki. It won't have any meaning, but I'm sure it'll be really, really fun. In the classroom bathed by the sunset, Arquaid smiles and makes a promise with me. In the end, when we go outside, the sun has already set. It's just past 7.30, a little early, but since we don't have anything else to do, we should start searching for the vampire. Well then, shall we begin, Arquaid? I turn around to face Arquaid, who is walking behind me. What, already? Didn't the sun just set? Yeah, but it wouldn't hurt to start earlier. We played around long enough today, so we should be serious at night, right? Arquaid, let's stick to our decisions. Shiki, you're strangely serious. If you're this serious, then why did you break your promise yesterday? Hey, I couldn't help that. I couldn't even move. I really did intend to go before. Yeah. If Akiha didn't stop me, I, prob I probably would have gone ahead to the park in my condition. Hmm. I see. Then let's do that. With a slightly empty expression, Arquaid says something I don't understand. Do what? You intended to go to the park, right, Cheeky? We still have time, so if you couldn't get it done yesterday, then isn't it okay if we do it now? She starts to run lightly. She really seems to be serious about going to the park. Hey, wait! Hey! I run with all my strength so I don't lose sight of her. See? Even though you were complaining, you still kept up, Shiki. Haha. <laughs> Arquaid laughs. Idiot. If I left you alone... You'd bother someone else. I desperately try to catch my breath after running the whole way. I knew there'd be a lot of people here now. It's a bit unsettling since I can feel their presence everywhere. Like I said, why you won't ever listen to what I have to say. Hmm? I hear your voice all the time. Oh, then you hear me. You just ignore me. That's worse. I don't ignore you. If I answer you, you scold me. I'm sorry. I If I answer whenever you scold me, you just call me an idiot, so I stay quiet. Oh, maybe <laughs> I have a problem, too. I still try to catch my breath. From my school to this park is roughly six kilometers. Even if it was a little jog, going that far is too much for a heart like mine. It's not that she was running all that quickly. Actually, she seemed to be running slowly. But probably because of the effects of my anemia, I don't feel too well. Are you okay, Shiki? You don't have to force yourself. Shouldn't you rest on that bench? I'll do that. Once I'm rested up, we'll go to the city again, Arquaid. Sheesh. I'm happy you're motivated, but it's still too early. Nervinsker was like that too, but vampires don't move around unless it's their time. Since they won't move around until they sense deep night, it's okay to keep a little time here. Kill a little time here. If that's how it was, then she could have told me earlier. Sitting on the bench, I stare at the clock aimlessly. It's just past nine o'clock. The people all around have gone away, and the night deepens quickly. For some reason, Arquay doesn't sit down, but paces back and forth as, she, as if she was bored. 
The hand of the clock ticks by. It's been about two hours since we came here. Phew. I've started to settle down, and there's nobody around now. The night starts to deepen. Arquaid, is it all right now? Yeah, it's all right. She agrees with me, but she doesn't really seem enthused yet. You've been acting strange since before, Arquaid. Is there something wrong? Not really. I was just concerned about that bandaged man you told me about. Arquaid sighs as she ponders to herself. Oh, that's right. Shiki, last night someone hit on me here. Huh? I'm saying some guy started to talk to me here. No, I heard you. I thought you said you were thinking about that bandaged man, though. I was. That's why I remembered. Just like when you were attacked, someone started to talk to me. I see. Well, that's good. Just looking from the outside, you are a beautiful person, so if you were walking around by yourself, it's entirely natural for a guy to talk to you. But that's not okay, everybody. Leave women alone. <laughs> I give a serious response. Sometimes, I'm a little too honest. You think so? I thought it was an enemy at first, but I remembered... But I remembered you saying something ab uh, before about how I always stand out. So after studying him briefly, I saw he was just a human. Wait a minute. Don't tell me you did something to the guy trying to hit on you. No, I didn't do anything. I just talked with him a little and made him forget about it. But if I didn't remember what you said, I might have. I see. Good job, Arquaid. I guess even you can make distinctions. Of course. It would have... It would have to take someone like you to make me angry. She seems to say this with some amusement. Well, it's natural for someone to get mad if they were killed. I sigh as I glance around the park. A month ago. If those serial murders never started occurring, there would still be young couples around, and the figures of students hanging out. But now, the only, ones the only ones talking here are me and Arcraid. I calmly talk about my current situation. Since when did Tonoshiki step off onto the, onto the path of such a world? Ah! Hey, see? Arcraid suddenly calls out to me. What, did, some did something happen? Yeah. See? Look at the clock. It's time. She points to the park's clock while giving a full smile. Looking. It's ten o'clock now. The promised time. The promised backed by only words. To meet here at ten o'clock at night. Last night. The promised time I couldn't keep. My words get stuck in my throat. Why does such a trivial thing suddenly cause my chest to tighten? Why? Why does such a trivial, trivial thing make her so happy? I really don't understand. I spent all day with her today, but it never felt like I was really a, but it never felt like she was really a vampire. Let me ask you something. Stop it, Shiki. Yeah. What is it? Are you? Don't ask her that. Um, am I what? Really a vampire? What kind of answer are you hoping for? A, a vampire? What's with that all of a sudden, Cheeky? It's, it's not all of a sudden. I was just thinking. I look away. Huh? I can't tell if you're really stubborn or not. I don't really mind, but that's pretty insulting. Tell me why you're asking that. There's no reason. But, at the same time, there's no real proof she's a vampire either. So, well, you said you don't even like to, excuse me, you said you don't even like to see blood. What kind of vampire is that? You even said you weren't a full vampire. But 
A vampire that hasn't sucked blood isn't a vampire, is it? That's not it. It isn't just that Tonoshiki... Isn't it just that Tonoshiki deep inside wishes, wishes she wasn't a vampire? Shiki, stand up. Arquaid approaches the park bench. I stand up. Our eyes meet. We're about two meters apart. Arquay gives a huge sigh and suddenly grins. I guess you're right. I even thought about it myself. I wondered, is Arquay Brunstad really a vampire? <laughs> she laughs. That's a relief. I thought this question would insult her, but thankfully, she seems to have taken it as a joke. Yeah. You really don't look like a vampire at all. <laughs> Arquaid laughs again. Then, shall we try? No, I'm sorry, then shall we try? She says this, still smiling. Try, huh? Shall we see if I can really drink blood? If I could, then can you give me a prize, Shiki? What? With that smile on her face, she takes a step closer. Tap, tap. Her footsteps echo in the air. I know she's joking. Still, I can't move at all. What? Wait. I can't even finish. It's not her power, but me who stops. Closer. One step. Another step. Looking down bit by bit. I... Not even able to lift a single finger. I'm transfixed by her lips. Cheeky, you said I wasn't a full vampire, but... A sweet voice that seems to echo in the back of my head. Another step, and the small footsteps stop. You know... I'm sorry. Uh, you know, drinking blood is very easy. I hear that voice right by my ear. Her body weight presses up against me. My throat freezes, and I can't speak. I can only feel her breath on my neck. It's hot, like a burning fire. Ar I stop calling her name. With my own will, I stop. Because I know if I call her name, she'll pull away. Her breath is so close. Her white fingers on my shoulders are trembling. She's scared. My mind is blank. And I'm not scared at all. But Arquaid is the only one shaking. I can't see her face. Just the swirling of her breath around my neck. And the feel of her trembling body against mine. It changes from a weak breeze to a heavy breathing. Arquaid? It was supposed to be a joke. Her voice shakes. The fingers on my shoulder cease their trembling. Instead, they dig into my shoulders like a bird's talons. Uh! A pained gasp escapes me, but her claws do not let up. They sink in, as if not allowing me to escape. Ark, I'm sorry. I guess I joked around too much. I'm sorry, so can you let go? Shiki. Her fingers don't move. This isn't good. My mind screams in warning, and I gather up all my strength. My arms move to push her away. Before that, pain shoots through my shoulders. Gah! My arms can't move at all. Her vice-like grip on my shoulders cause my arms to go numb. I can feel her breath grow even wilder against my neck. Maddening. Her teeth almost touch my neck. No! After the grip increases one more time from her white fingers, 
Arquaid flies black, practically screaming. Panting fills the air. Hard breathing echoes through the park. My ragged breathing. Arquaid's trembling breaths. Shiki. Her entire body shaking. She grasps, as if stuck to the entire atmosphere. As if to suck in the entire atmosphere as she stares in disbelief at her two hands. Her white fingertips are now dripping with my blood. The redness flows from her fingers into her palms, and then along her arms. Uh. She looks at it, and seems to be on the verge of collapse. Arquaid, it just now was... I call out to her. Looking up from the blood on her hands, she meets my gaze. Shiki... Yeah, I'm here. Just now. It was a joke, but it seems like it went a little far. I say that, wanting to let this end as just a joke. But I guess it didn't work out. Shiki, I just... Her eyes lose sanity. God, very thirsty. Her convulsions become deeper, and just now, she seems like she'll crumble to the ground. Please go home, Shiki. Hey, Arquaid! With that, she starts to run. She disappears fast. Not like she ran before, where she was talk where she was taking me into account. With the speed I couldn't even match if I sprinted with all my strength, she vanishes into the night toward the city. Ugh. She thinks I can just go back after seeing her like that. An idiot! Where is she going when she's in that much pain? I can't just go back home. Even though I know I, even though I don't know where to find her, I start to run after her into town. I don't see her anywhere. The city's too big, and it's nearly impossible for a single person to track her down when she leaves no trace behind. I'd much more likely I'd be much more likely to find her if I predict where she's going to go rather than blindly searching. Then... Okay. Go to Arquaid's apartment. Look in the commercial district or the school. Okay. So, my initial thoughts before the choices even came up was to just go to Arquaid's apartment because that's where she lives. That's where she would recuperate. But she doesn't really live, quote-unquote, anywhere. Um, the commercial district, maybe she shook off and is trying to look for more dead, I guess. But, like, even if she's there, we probably wouldn't be able to find her. The interesting option is the school. Because now we know, because we hit the bad ending, that the enemy vampire has their domain at the school. So, if we go to the school, some shit could happen. <laughs> um, really, god damn it, I really wish it would let me save. That shit makes me super mad. Um, but it doesn't really make sense, canonically, for Shiki to think to go to the school. But we're much more likely to run into the, the vampire if we go there. But we'll be killed. Um, at least we would likely to be killed, right? Uh, uh, good night, Toms. Let's think. Um... I'm gonna go to the apartment because even if she's not there, either it's locked and I can't get in or it's open, empty, and maybe there's some clues to her whereabouts. I'll go to Arquaid's apartment. I don't know what's behind it all, but she was breathing so painfully. Rather than trying to hunt the dead, she might have just gone back to her room. I press the doorbell. It doesn't seem like anyone's coming out. 
Shit. She hasn't come back? No matter, no matter how many times I push the button, her door doesn't open. Did she not come back? Or is she just not coming out? After hesitating, I decide to go inside. It'd be a simple thing to cut the lines on the door, but I should just check the knob first. Huh? It's not locked. The door opens simply with a turn. Arquade, are you here? No response. Did she not lock it in the first place? There's no one around. Where does she think she's going in that condition? I slam my fist against the wall. Ugh. What am I doing? If I have time to let it out on the wall, I have to go out and look for her. I can't find her. Come to think of it, if she really intends not to be found, there's no chance of me finding her at all. She said we'd meet again tomorrow. All I can do in this situation is to trust her and wait for tomorrow night. With a great uneasiness in my chest, I return to the mansion. Okay. This is a good place to stop for now. Wait. DNM. Didn't that come up in the bad end thing? Like Deadly Night Moon or something? Bro, I'm going to be real upset if we get another bad ending. <laughs> oh my god. Okay. Whoa. Wrong window. All right. So, we're going to stop for tonight. Um, again, fun as always. Uh... Tsukihime is a very, like, it's a, it's a very simple story, really. It, it's not, like, overly complicated or up its own ass. So it's, it's just a light, fun read. And we will keep going. We will finish Tsukihime. I did a little tiny Twitter poll uh, last night to see what people uh, wanted me to do after I finished the Arcade route. Um... Because I have other visual novels lined up. I'm going to keep doing this. This is so much fun, uh, this reading shit. Um, thank you. Um, so I got, I downloaded Umineko. Because I, I, I heard that's another visual novel with a pretty dedicated fan base. And before all that, I had a visual novel called Balder Sky that was I played the, like an hour of and that shit was so fucking cool that I decided I'm going to start over and stream this cuz this shit is fucking awesome. Um so eventually I will get to Baldur's Guy. Um and of course we also have Fate Stay Night to look forward to. But we have the entirety of Tsukihime to look forward to and I I think it's going to be like a fuck ton of uh, I think we're, it's going to be a long a long uh uh series. So that'll be a lot of fun. Thank you guys for uh, tuning in. I love it when I have people uh, reacting to the thing. But um, if you haven't seen any of the parts, you can always go to my YouTube channel and catch up. Or if you just want to watch it like as a thing. I think these videos are actually pretty good if you just want to like do something else and just listen to the audio. I think it works okay with that. Um, but I always love having people live and reacting and helping me with... Uh, uh, the options. I, I always uh, appreciate the input, even if I don't always go with the chat. Um, but yeah, thank you for tuning in, and we will reconvene on Monday.